Join with me in the responsive call to worship. A light shining in the darkness. The sound of angels' wings. A baby born in a stable. Come to Bethlehem and see. Sing, all ye sinners. 
hear these words of prayer. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first Sunday after Christmas. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning, so a big welcome to everyone who's in-house, and uh, good morning to all of those who are joining us in our online community. Uh, just uh, one really quick announcement this morning. So we're, we're making an assessment this week um, about whether it, we're going to be able to do our Christmas cantata next Sunday. So just to remind you a, li a little bit of church uh, schedule lesson, um, our culture kind of celebrates the Christmas season leading up to Christmas, but that's not the Christmas season, that's the Advent season. It's when we light a candle every week for four weeks anticipating Christmas. So Christmas starts on Christmas Day and goes for 12 days until Epiphany, which is the uh, 6th of January this year. And so having the cantata next year, or next week, um, if we're able to do so, falls within the Christmas season. 
And so uh, we're going to see if we have a, a core group that's going to be able to help make that happen. And we will be sending out a communication this week. Look for it. Um, or you can call the church office uh, to find out whether that is for sure going to happen. So I did want to let everybody know that the church office will be closed tomorrow um, because of the way Christmas uh, fell for the holiday season. But we will be open regular schedule from Tuesday on. Okay. So from Tuesday on. So once again, it's great to be together on this first Sunday after Christmas. And we're glad that you have come to experience the joy that comes with the birth of the Christ child. Amen. Let us be in that time of prayer with one another and with our God. God, we just ask that you help us settle into what Christmas means in our lives. We have been needing a light in our world, a savior, someone to guide us and show us and love us who you are and who we are called to be. And in the form of an innocent child, not in the might and strength of storms, but in the love and tenderness of innocence, you have come to us. And you have opened up our hearts and you have changed the world. So let us receive this baby into our hearts your presence known in the world, shown to us in the form of light in the darkness, found where shepherds and angels and wise men come. A place for everyone when there was no room. Help us, God, to take in the majesty of this birth, the transformative power it can have in our lives, the light that has been shared that cannot be put out. So help us, God, to grow with this infant, to be guided and loved and taught and nurtured, that our hearts might be open to new words and new ways, that we might understand the power of love and the difference it can and will make in our lives and in the world around us. So let this Christmas time come to us fully, no matter what darkness we are in, and our loneliness and our sickness, and abuse and violence. Help us to know the light, to share the light, to be the light that the world has received to one another. Thank you, God, for being a God who chooses to come and walk with us, to know us, our faults and our joys, to lift us up, to help us to walk on water. May we be filled with your spirit. May we bring Christmas to life. We are thankful for all of the blessings that surround us that all begin with you. 
Help us to be the light in the darkness. We pray to you as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Gospel of Luke in the second chapter records for us what happens to Jesus after he is born. And they bring him to uh, the temple for your purification rites and to be consecrated to the Lord. We would call this baptism today. And there, waiting for uh, the Holy Family, are two special people who have been waiting for this child's arrival. And so let's hear this story again, shared anew. Uh, We're in the second chapter of Luke, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised... You may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And a sword will pierce pierce your own soul too. Now there was also another prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, They returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. And he was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was on him. You know, this has been a year of doing a whole lot of waiting. And I've heard that word just shared countless times. We're waiting for a vaccine, maybe waiting for results to come in. We're waiting during this time that we just got done celebrating of Advent for Christmas to arrive. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And it got me thinking, 
I wonder how much time in one person's life that they spend just waiting. So, as we can all do now, I went to the internet and I looked some things up. Remember, there are a number of factors for us to consider when we talk about how much time we spend waiting doing things. One is how long one lives, uh, male versus female, uh, our occupation, just a couple things to just name a few. So here are some facts that I found. The average person spends two to three years of their life just waiting in line. Two to three years of their life. The average person spends two weeks in a lifetime waiting at a red light, waiting for the light to turn green. The average person spends 43 days in a lifetime on hold. And yes, the average person spends 20 minutes a day in the bathroom. If you live to be 80, that's approximately one year, one month, and one week. Of course, we wait in line at the doctor's office. We wait to have calls returned. We wait to go through security in an airport. Sometimes if we're in a bigger city, we wait for a bus or a taxi. We find ourselves waiting for the right person to come along. We even wait for the shower temperature to be just right before we are willing to step in. And for most people, as their day emerges, they even wait for their cup of coffee to brew because how could you possibly get through a day without that first cup of coffee. Waiting seems to be a part of that which is built into our, uh, our lives and our lifespans and our days and our weeks. And in today's scripture, we find two profound people finding themselves waiting as well. And their names are Simeon and Anna. Both of them advanced in years. Both of them find themselves in the temple, this holy place. And what is remarkable about their story is not that they don't wait like the rest of us for things to happen, but what they choose to do while they wait. You see, they find themselves in the temple, and there they are worshiping, they are praying, and they are serving, they are doing mission. They're talking with people. They're feeding hungry, the hungry. We find that, that Simeon is given the promise. This is how the scripture reads. Simeon is given the promise that he was, a, he was righteous and devout and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. Now, consolation, that means he was waiting for to receive some kind of comfort after a big loss or disappointment, he's waiting for the Messiah to be born. That consolation that God is sending because Israel has experienced a great loss and a great disappointment. And we find that the Spirit of God falls upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So... Oftentimes when we think about what we need to do before we pass on to God's kingdom, what we're called to do before we die, we oftentimes refer to that as unfinished business. It's amazing how strong certain people's constitutions are, how long they might hang on because they feel that they have business that has not yet been taken care of. But I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to be on your deathbed to have unfinished business in your life. You see, Simeon and Anna had been waiting their whole entire lives, but they're just not sitting and doing nothing. They are actively about the worship, the prayer and the mission of Jesus, in the, of, 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 the, of their Lord in the meantime. So I often find that no matter where we are in life, there are at least three things that move us to feel as if we have unfinished business in our life. 
First of all, God's Spirit either speaks to us in some form or fashion that causes us to want to do something. In Simeon's case, he is moved by the Spirit to do something with the promise that he will not die before the Messiah is revealed to him. And so many of us, the Spirit speaks to us, moves inside of us, wants us to be about something, and yet we oftentimes put that off. Wait for it to be fulfilled at a later time. And so God speaks to Simeon in this profound way and, 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 and promises him that, you know, if you are about my business, serving in my church and my temple, praying and worshiping and being about mission, you will not pass on into the kingdom of God until you see the Messiah revealed. God wants to reveal God's self to us all the time. And so what moves your spirit that causes you to have unfinished business? Not because you're necessarily close to drawing your last breath, but because God's spirit is speaking to you. And so he goes to the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. So the first thing is, is, is that is, if God's spirit is speaking to you, the second thing that usually causes us to have unfinished business is feeling that, the, 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 the feeling that a promise needs to be fulfilled. And Simeon says to God, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. You see, there's this promise given to us that when Jesus comes into our lives, that it brings peace along the way. You know, some of us might have unfinished business this morning because we need to offer that promise to someone else so that they can have peace. He says, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Unfinished business, waiting. We put it off and put it off, but people are uh, being spoken to every day by God's Spirit and the search for a promise fulfilled. And then there was this sweet prophet, Anna. We know that Anna had been married for seven years to her husband, and then her husband passed, and she lives to be 84 years old. And so the majority of her lifetime is spent after those years that her husband passes. And she finds herself a widow, and she serves in the temple, worshiping night and day, fasting, praying, and serving. And when the Holy Family comes in, she too recognizes the significance of this moment. And she comes up to them at that very important moment, and she gave thanks to God and, and, and spoke to, about the child to anyone who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Now, redemption is the buying back, the saving, or the being saved from something of significance. So, ha have you been following along about what causes us to have unfinished business in our life? God's Spirit speaking to us, waiting for a promise to be fulfilled or looking for some kind of redemption. This buying back of saving or being saved from something else. You know, we wait for a lot in our life. But there's other things that we wait for too. We just put it off. Oftentimes we wait to say I love you. Sometimes we wait to say I forgive you. Sometimes we wait to say, I'm sorry. You know, when Jesus is born, it is God's way of speaking into our life, 
to say to you today, I love you. You are forgiven. And maybe, just maybe, it is a moment in our lives to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I want to do better. <clears throat> this buying back, saving, or being saved from our own shortcomings, from our own procrastination, from our own self-imposed waiting as we kick our unfinished business down the road. What's your unfinished business today? Only you know. And we wait for it to be fulfilled so that we can have peace and have God's promise fulfilled in our lives so that we can yet again offer it to someone else. You know, today's a day that if there's someone out there that needs to hear the words, I love you, it's unfinished business that just needs to be taken care of, how, how powerful those three statements can be in someone else's life. I love you, I forgive you, or I'm sorry. Three statements that provi provide unimaginable healing. So Simeon and Anna wait for, have God's spirit speak to them, are waiting for this promise, are waiting for redemption. And yet they spend their time serving, praying, and worshiping. What's your unfinished business? What is God calling you to do this first Sunday after Christmas? It is a day to say, I love you, I forgive you, or I'm sorry. Amen. As I lift up a ministry moment today, I just want to share a bit uh, about trinity lunch you know i don't know how long that saint paul's has been a part of the trinity episcopal lunch program down in the city but eric and i this is our sixth christmas and i know it had been going it's been going on long before we got here so trinity episcopal church it's an episcopal church in the downtown area and one day somebody looked out of their windows and realized that they were right in the center of a lot of people who felt displaced, marginalized, or homeless. And so they decided that they were going to start providing a hot meal for all of those people every Sabbath, every Sunday. And they knew from the beginning that they weren't going to be able to do this by themselves. And so they started partnering with other churches just like us, just like St. Paul's. Now, we purposely signed up for the Sunday after Christmas. So today, there's a hot meal that's been cooking uh, all morning that's going down to Trinity Episcopal Church down in the city. And we know that more than 100 people who are marginalized, disenfranchised, homeless, are going to be getting a hot meal on this Sunday, first Sunday after Christmas. So when you think about, you know, where, what, what, what are my donations, what's my offering go, what does it go to? It goes to wonderful programs such as this. And so as we conclude our service today, you know, I, I just want to pray over that offering that's going to be our leaving our building here in just a few hours and going to a whole bunch of people that says, I love you. You are forgiven. I'm sorry for your situation. God's promise fulfilled in your life. So let's pray over God. We want to pray over our uh, offering today and, and, and also, uh, more importantly, over our Trinity meal that we're going to be taking down to uh, into the city later this afternoon we thank you for the bellies that it will fill and for the lives that it will touch in jesus name amen Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come.
to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms, see his open arms for God's soul. Christ, who today do you need to tell to say I love you? Because someone in your life, I'm sure, is waiting to hear it. And sometimes we wait and we put it off. Get rid of that unfinished business. Who, who, who today do you need to say I forgive you? Because for most of us, there's, there's somebody out there waiting to hear that. Who, who today in your life do you need to say, I'm sorry? Relationships can feel so fragile at times, but isn't that why Jesus comes in the first place? To heal our brokenness, to offer peace. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be most gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace on this first Sunday after Christmas.
And the mission of St. Paul's is is to be a place of worship, refuge, and outreach. You have a blessed week, my friends. Thanks for worshiping with us. Amen.